Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video we're gonna start with Regan Grimes' physique update. So as you can see, he has been training uh, with Logan Franklin. Both of these two guys are trained by Milos Sharchev. So they did a workout session together, and then later Logan helped Regan with some posing, but... That's not a topic of my concern, what I'm more concerned with here is Regan's sexual physique. Where he is at right now, at this point, four weeks out of Arnold Classic and uh, what he looks like right now. So, based on this photo right here, I mean, I can't really tell much, but I'm seeing a great back, sure. And the entire rear side, like the glutes, the hamstrings and the arms and the delts from behind, everything is looking great. But wasn't Regan always great at that pose? Like, all the back poses were really good for him? Yeah, I mean, he was. But is he progressing like crazy? Like many people expected, you know, him to be like at the top three at the Iron Classic. Myself included, at one point before the Iron Classic list came up, I thought this guy might win it. Or something like that, be like top two, top three. Now, based on all the updates... Yeah, I know, he was he was sick for a while, so he wasn't able to train, he missed a couple of days, but still, I mean, I just don't see him right now, this year, transforming into this great bodybuilder that everybody is expecting Regan to transform into, that he has the potential to do, no doubt, but not this year, I don't see it, I don't think that's gonna happen this year, I mean, it's gonna take a little bit longer than that. He's coached by Milos Archiv, and I know Milos competed <laughs> at every opportunity that he had. I mean, he has over 100 shows in his career, and there were years where he competed in every single pro show there was. That's his philosophy, and he thinks that he grows the most in those uh, post-show rebound periods. But was that really the best decision for Regan? I don't think so. I think Regan needs a longer time off to actually grow, to mature, to get bigger, to get thicker. I don't think he can do that by competing every four, five, six months. I just don't. And when I say thickness, this is exactly what I mean. Look at how big, how dense, how thick James is from the side. A lot of guys look big from the front or from the back, but when they turn to the side, that's when you can see how big, how massive somebody really is. Dorian was sort of known for that, and now you can see James looking like that as well. Look, uh, James's weak point is his back, and he's training his back like a maniac, and his structure of his lats, of his back, is not allowing him to have a great back, at least in the back double bicep, but his lats are growing, that's for sure, and you can see it in these transitions. From the side, there is so much muscle underneath his arm, he has a ton of muscle on those lats. So this is this is what happens when you lift heavy weights and you take some time in the off-season, you compete once a year. You take some time off to grow and you take that time seriously. And I think that's why James beats Regan, at least he beat him at the British Grand Prix. And I do think he's a better bodybuilder, even though Regan is more genetically blessed. James beats him, I believe, because of his hard work, because he outworks him, he outtrains him, he trains like an absolute maniac during the offseason, he doesn't do fluff sets, he doesn't do uh, giant sets, he doesn't do like all this pump stuff, he lifts like an absolute monster, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to mention James, because take a look at this, guys. Do you see how many plates are there? Can you count? This is 8 plates! No, this is not 800 solid pounds like Ronnie Coleman did, but it's 8 plates, it's very close. It's not a monolift, nobody helps him re-rack the weight, he just <laughs> steps backwards, he does that squat, it looks like he did it with ease, and he re-racks it. This is just a one rep attempt, uh, usually he doesn't do this so often, uh, he's doing this as he says, so he can do easy reps with 700 pounds or 7 plates. So that's how crazy James is, how hard working he is, how, how, how much of a, of a freaking monster in the gym he is. And that's what I'm telling you, like off-seasons, heavyweights, 
and you look like this thick dense big round even though he doesn't have the best the best structure ever he's so massive he's so muscular he has so much freaking mass on his frame that he can't and he won't be ignored yes at the mr olympia he failed because his peak went completely horrible but as long as he peaks properly and everything goes well for him this guy will do some serious damage in the future i promise you that in my previous video, I talked about William Bonek, I showed you some training footage, and I told you that he looks bigger and fuller and rounder and better than he looked on the Mr. Olympia stage the last two years. And you guys told me, some of you, that his legs underneath his clothes seemed small. And I wasn't sure, I mean, I didn't see his legs, but now I have a chance to take a look at them, and you guys do as well, so you can see right here, that his legs are looking pretty good. I mean, they are not looking like big Rami's legs, but they still beat Brandon Curry's legs. Are they up in size? Take a look at his photo. It's him at the Mr. Olympia 2021. And yeah, you guys know that he wasn't able to train two weeks prior to, to competing. So I guess he lost some fullness everywhere, his legs included. So uh, are his legs bigger now? I'm sure he pumped him up a little uh, before this show. Yeah, some guys do that. They sacrifice details for the fullness. Most guys don't train legs 10 days before the show and they don't pump them up. But some of them that need more fullness in the legs, they pump them up and they train them up until the show. And I think uh, I think William Bonnock is probably doing that. I'm guessing Brandon Curry is probably doing the similar thing. And uh, here on the left photo right now, He's probably pumped up because the details are gone. His legs are full of blood. So are his legs really bigger, better? I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe it's too late for him to improve his legs. You guys know what is the first body part that goes away with age. Yeah, that's legs. And it's usually impossible for the guys to bring them back up. I think Dexter Jackson kind of accomplished that but uh, he didn't really did it fully so it's really it, it's hard to expect Bonek to come with better legs with bigger full rounder quads in this photo i don't know i don't know i don't think he improved that much honestly but the <laughs> the calves are looking pretty ridiculous though which is absolutely irrelevant for for the shows for this Arnold classic but is that gonna be still enough for him to be second or first well, I mean, Brandon has very poor legs and we are all expecting him to win, so why the hell not Bonac? As long as he is really, really good upstairs, there's a possibility. Alright, now we have some bad news as well. We have a couple of bodybuilders dropping out of Iron Classic at four weeks out. As you can see, Mohamed Shaban right here, he looked great. I mean, of course, he was always known for those freaky, freaky legs. But even upstairs, he looked big, full, I mean, he looks great, he, his conditioning is coming up, everything is pretty much spot on, but unfortunately, very unfortunately, he had to withdraw, and he's not gonna be doing the Arnold Classic because of a spine injury, or a neck injury, he hurt um, one of the discs in the upper back area, upper back and the neck area, he, he gave us basically an explanation here, what exactly happened, what is the problem, but officially he is out of the Arnold Classic. Who else is out? Nathan Diasha. A reason also, an injury, but this time in the arm or actually bicep. He was uh, working out his biceps and he heard some sort of a snap, he felt actually something, I don't know. You can check out his video, he explains everything and he writes this caption here, but the point is... Nathan Diasha is out, we kind of didn't really count on him, you know, because it's always troublesome to travel to the USA for these guys, and he wasn't able many times when he was supposed to, so a lot of people were actually uncertain of him actually showing up, but the reason right now it's not the travel problems, it's actually an injury, so I, I wish both of these guys speedy recovery, and I want to see them on stage as soon as possible. All right, now some classic talk, or is this even classic talk? I'm not even sure, because Keon Pearson competed in 212, and he did pretty well in 212, and then he decided to keep competing in classic. How can he make the weight in classic? 
he can do that by being natural. So that's his decision. He decided to stay natural and to compete in classic like that. At least that is what he said the last time we heard anything um, from him talking about his future plans. But now, this is his current physique. Does he look like he went off, really? I don't know, I don't know, I mean, he looks really big and round, I, it looks like, to me, it looks like he is growing. I don't think he added a lot of fat, I think he just gained some water, he looks very lean still, you can see his hamstrings there and, uh, and some details in the quads, like overall, his stomach doesn't look fat, he has uh, veins on his forearms, he's just a little watery, but he's not fat or anything like that. He gained some body fat, of course, but he's not fat. So, I, I don't know, what the hell is he doing? Uh, can he make the weight in classic looking like this? He's short, so his, his weight cap is very low, and he competed in 212 at about, I believe, 205, something like that. So he was a big 212, he wasn't a small 212. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe he's actually trying to downsize by not using anything and his body just won't let go of the muscle, maybe he's that genetically blessed. But how well can he do in classic? Well, he was fourth in the Mr. Olympia at one point, now it's way more competitive, but he does have everything, I mean, he has the tools, he has the shape, he has everything, it's just gonna be you know, about making the weight and actually getting that maturity, those details that he doesn't really have. He needs something like this, take a look at this guy. Ramon Dino, look at this freaking aesthetic physique, this is just impossible, this is the only guy that I can imagine beating Chris Bumstead eventually, the only guy in the top 5 at the Mr. Olympia, he kind of has similar frame and structure like Chris Bumstead, but with arms, with crazy freaking arms, so right now at 4 weeks out his conditioning is coming along, he's looking great in this video, it's uh, it's outdoor lighting, so that, that shows you exactly what he looks like, and everything is pretty much spot on, he already competed once after the Mr. Olympia, and he looked better at that show than he did at the Mr. Olympia, so I'm expecting him to be even better at the Arnold, and then at the Mr. Olympia 2022, what's that gonna look like? I can only imagine. But this guy right now, this is my favorite to actually win the Arnold Classic. I think it's gonna be between him and Terence Ruffin. I feel like Brion's career is slowly coming to an end, and I feel like Urs beat uh, Ramon only because Ramon wasn't as conditioned, but I feel like Ramon is going to present an insane level of conditioning at the Arnold, and that's gonna be plenty enough to beat or and most likely Terence Ruffin, it's gonna be a challenge, Ruff Diesel is a great bodybuilder, but Ramon, I don't know, I think this guy just has it all, he has it all, this guy is gonna be a serious threat to Chris Bumstead next year, or in a couple of years, but I can definitely see, I can, I can only see this guy, from all the classic bodybuilders in the world right now, that can actually dethrone Chris Bumstead, because he has a similar structure with better arms, that's about it. So guys, that's gonna do it for this video, if you enjoyed it, please give it a like, and for more stuff like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much guys for watching, all the best, and bye bye.